Hello, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me in this second tutorial about Arduino libraries. Now, in the first tutorial, we talked about downloading and setting up an Arduino library in your Arduino installation uh, so that you could use, you know, so that you could use it. And now in this tutorial, we're going to talk about some of the syntax that you may find in one of the Arduino libraries. Um, so some of it when you open up an Arduino library can be rather unusual and you might sit there staring at it and trying to figure out like what what is this even talking about? So um, we're gonna look at a couple different libraries and we're gonna talk about a couple different things um, but m the focus for this tutorial is so that you can get familiar with some of the terminology um, that is that kind of makes up a library um, and the syntax that makes up a library. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So let's look at this piece of code right here, this sketch. All right, uh, you can see the comments that says blinking LED, and this is a piece of code that I wrote, and it took me, I don't know, a minute, a minute and a half to write. Um, so I've got some data up at the top, some variables that I declared. I've got LED pin, it's set equal to 5, and I've got a delay time specified. So I've got a variable that holds the amount of uh, milliseconds I want to delay. I come in, I've got a setup. I kind of set up what I want the pin to be. I've got it as an output. And then I come down to void loop, and I do a digital write. I delay, I do another digital write, and then I do another delay. So this sketch blinks an LED. So notice that this sketch has two components, all right? It's got data, you know, numbers, and then it's got functions. So it's got functionality, so data and functionality. Um, so what I want to talk about is what a library actually is. An Arduino library is actually a class, okay? And a class is a special kind of um, data structure in the C programming language um, that has data and it also has functionality. So think of an array. Hopefully you're familiar with arrays. If you're not, you can check out the previous tutorials on arrays. But an array is a data uh, structure that can hold multiple pieces of data. And a class is kind of like an array because it can hold multiple pieces of data, but it also has functionality. So a class is extremely awesome. And again, libraries are really just classes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a class. Now, why would you want a class? Well, a class simplifies things for you. Okay, so in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what would happen if we were to take all of this and make it a class. Okay, and we're not going to actually make it a class, but we're just going to kind of talk through some of the terminology and we're going to kind of make a mock class out of this. All right, so let's go ahead. I want you to pretend that, that this line that I'm drawing right here, all this information up here is a brand new sketch. So pretend this doesn't even exist. We're going to go back to it for reference, but for our purposes, we're just going to look right up here. So if I wanted to make a class, I would simply write the word class, note that it's a keyword, and then I'd give the class a name. And I'm going to call this class LED Blinker. All right, and what this class is going to do is it's going to blink an LED. And all I want to be able to, all I want to have to do is I'm going to tell this thing a pin number, and I'm going to tell this thing a delay time, and it's going to do the rest. Okay, so it's kind of taking care of the work for me. So every class has a name. So the the name of this class is LED Blinker, and another thing that everything every class has is called a constructor. Okay, and what a constructor does is it gathers all of the necessary information in order to make an instance of that class. Okay? So we've got three term three terms here that we're talking about. We've got the word class. Again, the word class kind of defines this data structure functionality that we've been talking about. We've got constructor, and constructor is the name of the item that kind of collects the information that you need for your class. And then we've got instance. And an instance is a particular part, or it's a particular um, instance of a class, okay? So let's just go ahead and write a constructor here. So the constructor is the same, has the same name as your class. 
So at first that's a little confusing, but it actually makes, makes things very simple and easy. So here's my constructor, LED blinker, and what it's going to do is it's going to kind of look like a function call, but it's going to define the information that I want. So what, what information do I need? I need a pin number and I need a delay time. So a pin number is an integer, so I'm just going to call this pin, and um, a delay time can also be in the form of an integer, and I'll just call this delay time, like so. All right, so there's my constructor. So LED blinker, again, it's the same name as the class, and I'm defining the two arguments that I need to pull in in order to make an instance of that class. Now, there's also going to be functions associated with a class. Now, down here, we really have, uh, we really have a couple functions. We've got digital right and um, digital right high and digital right low. So what we would do, and we're not actually going to do it here, but what we would do is we would wrap all of this up into our, a simple function, and we would call it blink me. So right here, we're just kind of defining a function. And again, we're not explicitly writing the function here because we're just kind of mocking this up. We don't want to get too into the details at this point. All right, and then maybe we'd have another function. We'd call it uh, fade me, and that would use pulse width modulation to fade the LED. Okay. So here is my class. Again, so the class is called LED Blinker. It has a constructor. The constructor is the same name as the class. And the constructor is basically going to define some arguments that I have to pass in order to create an instance of LED Blinker. And then I've got some functions inside here that I can use with my class. OK, so let's go ahead. I'm going to make another line here. So here's a line. Okay, divide this, use this in your brain, and pretend this is a brand new program. And now let's say I want to actually use this class. Well, how do I use a class? Well, it's pretty easy. First thing I do is I write the name of the class. So LED Blinker. All right, and then I have to name the instance of the class. So I'm going to call this um, my LED. So this is basically the name of a think of this as the name of a variable. Um, you know when you write make an integer. So here's an integer. Integer is a data type, and then you have to name your variable. Well, LED blinker you can kind of think of is that a, a, you can kind of think of LED blinker as a data type. It's just a data type that we defined, and it's also a data type that ha happens to have functionality to it. Okay, so we've written the name of the class LED blinker. We give a space, now we name the instance of the class, and then what we do is we set it equal to the constructor. Okay. So LED blinker, and now we need to pass it, oops, LED blinker, there it is. Now we need to pass it the information that this program is going to need to make an instance of my LED. Well, what was the information? Well, it needs an integer that's going to specify the pin number, and then it needs an integer that's going to specify the delay time. So I'm going to pass it the integer 4, so that's pin 4, and I'm going to pass it a delay time, I'll say 1,000. So 1,000 milliseconds. Okay, so right here, I have created an instance of the LED class. All right, so now let's say I'm down at void loop. All right, so void, oops, void loop. and I want to blink my LED that I stuck at pin 4 on my Arduino board. How would I do that? Well, here, this is what it looks like. You have to name the instance that you're talking about, so my LED. You put a period, and then you follow it by the function that you want to call. Well, what function did we want to call? We wanted to call the blink me function, so I'm just going to type blink me. And, and whammo, there it is. So my LED, my LED right there, I'm calling that instance of the LED blinker class. I put a period, and then I, I've got the function name, blink me. So what's going to happen here? Well, the LED that's attached to pin 4 on my Arduino board is going to blink, and it's going to use a 1,000 as the delay time. Okay? So again, we didn't explain explicitly write 
this blink me function anywhere, but you just have to imagine with me that it has been written. Okay? Now, in the same thing, we could say um, uh, my LED dot fade me. All right? And then it would it would perform this fade me function also. Okay, well, this is all handy dandy, but what's awesome about classes is we can have another instance of the LED blinker class. Well, how do we do that? Well, all we do is change the name. All right, so let's change it to my, let's call it my other LED, my other LED. And I want to change the parameters here because I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the LED at two and I want it at pin two and I only want it to blink for 500 milliseconds. All right, so same exact line of code. I've just changed the name and I've changed the arguments that I pass. I don't have to change the arguments that I pass. Well, actually the pin number I have to change. Um, in this case at least, because I can't have two LEDs sharing the same pin at blinking at different rates. I suppose I could, but it'd get kind of weird. But anyway, so now what do I, what do, I do down here? Well, all I gotta do, I can do the same thing again. I'll just paste that there. But now when I wanna refer to this instant, I just use that name right here, my other LED dot blink me. Does this make sense? All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go look at a couple examples uh, in the Arduino sketch, uh, a couple of example Arduino sketches to kind of sync this in. All right, but before we do this, I want to just draw your attention to something. Notice this dot blink me. Does this look familiar to you? This syntax? I think it should. Let's look at a really common one. Have you seen this before? Serial dot print. Well, wait a sec. What do you suppose this says? Well, serial is a class that Arduino uses, and print is a function of that class. All right. Now, serial is built in. The serial serial class is built into the Arduino IDE, so you don't have to go through all the trouble of creating an instance of the class. But you're still you're still using that class. All right. Anytime you use the print or anytime you use that serial library. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap before we jump into some of the examples. A class is like a really cool data structure. Okay, um, a class has data and it has functionality. A class has to have a name and a class also has to have a constructor. And a const the constructor is always the same name as the class. The constructor has all of the information that you need in order to make a specific instance of that class. So think of the constructor as the cookie cutter. Okay, the constructor is the cookie cutter and the instance is like the actual cookie that you eat. Okay? Um, classes have functions and those functions can be applied to instances of the class and to do that you just use the name of the instance you want followed by a period and then the function and then just to note you know these functions could take you know you could also be passing arguments to these functions I mean look at serial print you pass an argument to serial print you know like print blah or whatever okay so let's go ahead and look at a couple examples of some other libraries and let's see if we can identify a couple things but before we do that one more thing I want to talk about now, like everything in programming, there's 101 ways to do the same thing. So, what if I told you there was an easier way to create an instance of a class? I bet you'd jump right on it. Well, there is. Alright, so the easy short code to, to do this is you still have to name the class. So here's LED Blinker, that's the class. And you still need to name it, so we'll just call it my my, uh, we'll just use the same thing here, we'll call it my LED. But now instead of setting it equal to the constructor, all we're going to do is open a parenthesis and we're going to directly send the information, that those arguments, and then we're going to close the parenthesis. So do you see this? All we've done is skipped this right here. And these two lines of code are equivalent. Alright, so all you're doing is skipping this equals LED blinker. All right, so this um, is a little more explicit, 
But this, man, doesn't this look so much cleaner when you skip having to call that constructor? Now you might be asking, well, why would you do it this way? Well, I, I don't know. I'm sure, plenty of people like to do it this way. Plenty of people like to do it this way. It doesn't matter. The exact same thing. Okay, so you've seen the short code here. All right, so let's go ahead and now let's look at an example. So we're going to go to File, Examples. We're going to come down here. Notice, you know, these are the examples we've gone through before if you've gone through the tutorials. But down here, all of those libraries that we have loaded, they also come with examples, which is really awesome. So let's take a look at the Stepper library. This comes pre-installed on the Arduino IDE installation. And let's look at Motor Knob. Let's expand this and let's see all I want to do. I don't want to talk like in depth about this example. I just want to see if we can identify the class name, a constructor, a couple functions. Okay, so all right. So notice when we use a library, we've got to use the include statement and we've got to use the name of that library. We've got to refer back to the header file. So that's what that line of code means. That refers to the uh, .h file in your library file. And if you recall from the first tutorial, we kind of talked about that header file. So that's what that does. All right, this define function, this defines something um, that follows in the sketch. All right, and we'll kind of see this shortly. I'm not going to go too in depth about this, but because uh, I'm not too worried about it. So let's come down to this next line of code in this library. Stepper, stepper, what is, what is this? Well, hey, look we're creating an instance of the stepper class. Okay, so what's the name of the class? Hey, it's stepper. What are we gonna call this instance? Well, we're gonna be real creative and we're just gonna call it stepper. Okay, notice the lowercase s that differentiates it from stepper, but we could have called this my second kidney. It doesn't matter what you call this, but we just happen to call it stepper. And then what's all this information in here? Well, we're passing arguments to the stepper so that we can create an instance of it. Okay, so what have we done here? We have created an instance of the stepper class. All right, that's easy enough, right? So let's look down in setup. Anything interesting in here? Hey, look at that, stepper.setSpeed. So what's this? Well, stepper is the name of our instance, dot set speed. Well, set speed must be a function of the stepper library. Does that make sense? All right, let's, we'll come, let's come down to void loop. Anything interesting here? Hey, look at this, stepper.step. And we're passing it some, some values here. Well, stepper, again, that's referring back to this instance of this, of this stepper class. And we're using the step function from this stepper class. All right, does that make sense? I think it should. Again, we're not trying to become pros, we're just trying to kind of see some of this, understand some of the syntax here. Let's look at another one. Let's go to File, Examples, and let's look at the Servo Library. Let's look at Sweep. All right, so again, here's the include statement. Again, and all this is doing, it's pointing the code to the header file in your library folder. And then we can look, here's Servo, My Servo. So Servo is the name of the class, and then my servo is the name of the instance. And notice here, we're not passing any information to my servo, are we? And that's because we don't need to. This is, uh, this is a class that only has the need for functions. There's no data that needs to be associated with it, and that's fine. All right, now I want you to notice too, it says object, okay? so. Um, you may have heard of object-oriented programming. And when we start talking about classes um, and instances, we really start kind of talking about objects. And really it's just a way, uh, it's kind of an abstraction, and it allows you to think about how you um, are programming. So if you see the word object, um, you can kind of think of it as an instance. All right, so here's uh, an instance of the servo class. All right, let's come down here. Hey, look at this in void setup. We've got a function, the attach function of the servo class. All right, my servo dot attach. Come down here again and here's another function, a right of the servo class and another right. All right, so I think you're getting the kind of gist here. 
Um, let's look at one that's a little more complicated. And this is one that I uh, just recently downloaded. It's the Capacitive Sensor Library. I'll go ahead and open up. This is a contributed library. Uh, extremely cool. I will be doing a tutorial in the future on this library because it was so easy to do and so much fun. But let's take a look at this. All right, so here's the include file. Right? It's going to point to the header file in our library folder. And then look at here, Capacitive Sensor, that's the name of the class. Here's the name of the instance, CS under slash 4 under slash 2. So that's kind of a weird name. And then it's set equal to the constructor. So here they have explicitly defined it. And this is the first way we did it. The name of the class, the name of the instance, setting it equal to the constructor. And then we're passing it two bits of information, you know, two pieces of information. This happens to be the uh, this is the input and then this is the sensor. All right. And then look, we've got three separate instances of this class. Does that make sense? So three different names here. They just change by that last digit, but three different names. And we're passing it different pieces of information. So then we come here to setup. And notice that we've got a function that's applying only to the first instance. All right. So here's cs under slash 4 under slash 2 dot and then this funky function name, all right? And we're passing it some data. And then we come down here and look at here's a, a couple functions. Now this is a little confusing um, and uh, it, it was for me and I'm not sure if this is just a convention I'm not familiar with, but notice that the name of this function is the same name as the class except that the c is lowercase. So that can be a little confusing, but don't don't be uh, deceived. This is actually a function of the capacitive sensor class. All right. So here we're in the loop. It looks like they are setting some variables, initial declaring and initializing some variables, and they initialize it to the function capacitive sensor. Okay. So there's three examples. Um, I think this should help you get familiar with. Uh, what you're going to see in some of these libraries that you start to use. I hope this um, was helpful. I plan on doing some more tutorials on uh, making our own classes. So basically, how to build your own library. Those are going to be a little more in depth. It's going to be a little higher level, but you know, you just kind of slowly move up. So hey, thank you so much for joining me. So glad uh, you listened in. I hope this was helpful. See you next time. Oh, 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 oh,